What is up guys, it's Cal, and in this video I'm going to show you 17 bosses in WoW that hunters can tame. So these are beasts that Blizzard has allowed us to tame, some are beast mastery only, some aren't. I'll also tell you the special abilities that these pets have in case you want to use them in the near future, considering the bosses do look cool and have very unique models. So let's get started. The first boss is named Pabu Ra in Black Fathom Depths. He's the first boss in Black Fathom Depths and he is a turtle, so let's head there now. So here is, well, this is actually the boss. Pa Boo was the boss before this was sort of redone, but uh, we can actually tame both of them. Gamu and Pa Ra, or Pa Boo Ra, whatever the names are. So there's that. And then here is Pa Boo. And he's a turtle, so non-exotic, and his special ability is Shell Shield, which reduces his damage taken by 50% for 12 seconds. And he is a tenacity pet. The next pet is Chromagus in Blackwing Lair. So if we're in Blackrock Mountain, you can go through here and this will bring you to Blackrock Spire. But we're gonna go down this way. We're gonna click this thing, which will bring me to Blackwing Lair. Now here we are, we just click this lever and he will come out and then we could just easily tame him like this. He is a core hound, so you do need to be Beastmaster to tame him. And because he's a core hound, he is tenacity with special abilities of Obsidian Skin, which reduces damage he takes by 50% and Molten Hide, which means when he takes damage, he also hurts the enemy a little bit. Now, since we are still in Blackrock Mountain, let's actually head to Blackrock Spire. So, Blackrock Mountain, we're gonna go through this entryway up here into Upper Blackrock Spire to Son of, uh, Son of Beast, I think that's what it's called. Yep, Son of the Beast. And here we are coming up to Son of Beast, which will be in this corner right here, Son of the Beast. So let's go ahead and tame him. Uh, he has a core hound. You do need to be Beast Master to tame him. And he does, well, does knock you back with that. Let's go ahead and tame him. He does have the same special abilities as Chromagus, which are Molten Hide and Obsidian Skin. And he does actually have a slightly different color than normal core hounds. I think his red is a bit darker than normal core hounds. Now, since we're still in Blackrock Mountain, there's one more um, there's one more boss that we're going to tame, and it's going to be in Blackwing Descent. It is uh, Chimeron. So here he is, let's go ahead and tame him. And he is, he's too calm to tame right now. You do need to talk to this guy in the corner. 
and then he will wake up. And now you do need to DPS him to 20% to tame him. Uh, take off all your gear. I would recommend taking off all your gear because I did almost kill him. And he's actually a Hydra. He's not a Chimera. He's a Hydra. So he's non-exotic. And his special ability is he's tenacity. Special ability is Acid Bite, which is Immortal Wounds. Next boss is in AQ40. So we're going into this instance portal. And this is actually three bosses in one. So we're going to take three bosses at the same time. So here we are, we jumped down that uh, like spiral staircase sort of thing. And this is Lord Kree, Vem, and Princess Yaj. And you can tame all of them. Now they do have some like kind of CCs to them. It might take a little bit to tame them, but it's really not, not too difficult. They can fear, as you can see there. But we're just gonna tame each of these. And there we go. So they are Celithids, meaning that you do need to be Beast Mastery to tame them, but they do have two special abilities. They're cunning, first of all, but they have Dune Strider, which increases their movement speed by 30%, and they also have Tendon Rip, which decreases the target's movement speed by 50%. Next up, we're gonna skip all the way to Mist of Pandaria at the Magushan Vaults. The first boss, the uh, like, quadruple quillen boss whatever it's called you can actually tame all four of those now you do want to put it on 25 man before going in put on 25 man before going in so all four of them are active at the same time because if you put on 10 man then uh, only three of them will be active and we're going to tame each of them just like this so you get four different colors cobalt jade jasper and amethyst So since they're Quillens, you do need to be Beast Mastery to tame them. They are, let's see, they are Tenacity and their special ability, they have Stone Armor when they fall below 40% health. Quillen Skin will change to Stone, causing it to take 40% less damage and regenerate 3% of its max health every second for 15 seconds, and that can occur once every 2 minutes. And along with that, they also have an instant res that's on an 8 minute cooldown. So Quillens used to have a battle res, but they took battle reses away from Hunters. Now, uh, for Quillens, if it dies, I can instantly resurrect it. Now this next pet is one of my favorite looking pets, and it is Undasta up at the Isle of Giants north of uh, Pandaria. Isle of Giants here, and he is a world boss. Now the hardest part about taming Undasta is uh, the fact that he drops a mount, and he's always dead, like he currently is. I assume he probably died recently, but he does only have like a 15 minute spawn timer. They did greatly reduce it when uh, hunters were able to tame Undasta. So... We're just gonna wait for him to respawn. And here we go, he just spawned. And there we go. Obviously shrinks way in size. This guy probably wanted to kill him. Anyways, he's a devil sword, so you do need to be beast mastery to tame him. And uh, he is ferocity. His special abilities are uh, mortal wounds and feast, which is kind of useless. It's like a cannibalize one minute cooldown. So now the next pet is Horridon from Throne of Thunder. But before you do that, if you have not gotten the Tome of Dinomancy, you do need to get that, and you get that while on this island. So we're gonna go on to this boat right here. Try to get up there somehow. And what you wanna do is you wanna kill all Zandalari Dinomancers you see. It might not drop for me again, because I already have it but kill all the Zandalari Dinomancers and they do have a small chance to drop the Tome of Dinomancy, but you need that before you can tame Direhorns. So once you get to that Tome of Dinomancy and learn how to tame Direhorns, then come to uh, the Isle of Thunder and we're going to go into this uh, thro uh, Throne of Thunder, that's what it's called.
Oops, let's not kill him. Okay, so we're at Horadon. Let's go ahead and tame him. Remember, you can only do this once you've been able to tame Direhorns from the Tome of Dinomancy. And there we have it. Now, Direhorns are non-exotic. So you can tame them in any spec. You just need to learn how to tame Direhorns. And he is... Uh, tenacity. His special ability is Gore, which is a Mortal Wounds. Next up, we're going to do two mounts in the same dungeon. This is uh, Iron Juggernaut and Thok. So one's mechanical, the other is a Devil Soar. Now, with 8.3, uh, it has resorted back to normal. Uh, was this Veil of Eternal Blossoms has resorted back to normal in Mindaria. But you can still just go underwater. Yep. Just go underwater. And um, there's the instance portal. Okay, so here we are coming up to the Iron Juggernaut boss. Now, you can't outright just tame him like this. He is a mechanical, so you do need the uh, Megabond Imprint Matrix that engineers can make. Now, if you're a goblin or a gnome, you can already tame mechanical pets, and you don't need to worry about that. You start out being able to tame mechanical pets. But if you're anyone else, any other race, you do need the Megabond Imprint Matrix, like I just said, which engineers can make. And we come to Iron Juggernaut, and you want to kill him. And he will drop... A uh, pile of juggernaut parts. So he will drop these. If he doesn't drop them from you, you might not have the Mecha Bond Imprint Matrix. Not 100% sure on that, but I've had people say that it hasn't dropped for them. My only explanation for that is you might not be able to tame mechanical pets yet. So Iron Juggernaut is a bit of a process to tame. You do need another part, which is from um, Black Fuse. And then you also need to get to one of four paint buckets. It's four different Iron Juggernauts that you can tame. But I have each of those colors. I made a specific video on this. If you want to watch that, I will link it at the end of the video. But you don't have to watch that because I will show you how to do it in this video. But first part for Iron Juggernaut is uh, the pile of Juggernaut parts. Now we're coming up to the first paint bucket, which is after the Dark Shaman's boss. We're gonna kill that demon dude and we're gonna walk up here and we're gonna go into this back corner right there. So this is the green paint bucket. This is if you want your Iron Juggernaut to be a, well, green color. And it's right here in this hut. Bucket of green paint. Okay, so the next paint bucket is after you kill Malkarok. I just killed him. We're gonna go downstairs here. And then once we go downstairs, we're going to loop around, go this way against the wall. And then past all these wolves will be the blue, hold on, let me kill them. Blue paint bucket in this corner. So it's right here. This is if you want your Iron Juggernaut to be a blue color. Now remember, you do not need all these paint buckets. You only need the paint bucket that you want uh, your Iron Juggernaut's color to be.
Okay, so we've just finished spoils at Pandaria. This is where you can get to the next paint bucket. It is the teal color. After you finish it, you can go into any other quadrants. You want to come into this quadrant right in this corner. And it's right there. This is if you want your Iron Juggernaut to be teal and have to wait till I'm out of combat. There we go. That is the teal paint bucket. Now we do have just one more paint bucket that uh, we can get if we want our Iron Juggernaut to be that color. That is gray. But before we do that, we're going to go and tame Thok, which is another boss that is in this instance. Just run up to him and you can just immediately tame him. Now he is a devil soar, so you do need to be beast mastery to be able to tame him. Let's get a little closer. Do need to be beast mastery to be able to tame him. And uh, he does have the same special abilities as Undasta, which are the uh, cannibalized thing feast and uh, mortal wounds, monster spite. Okay, we are at Black Fuse. I know we said we need one more paint bucket for Iron Juggernaut, but we do need one more actual piece to be able to create the Iron Juggernaut and it just drops from Black Fuse. So it is... My inventory is full. It is the Black Fuse's power core. So we can go ahead and make a uh, Iron Juggernaut right now if you want it to be green, blue, or teal. But we have one last paint bucket if you want your Iron Juggernaut to be gray. Now we're towards the end of the dungeon, right before Garrosh. It's after the Klaxi boss. Uh, remember to not kill the Klaxi boss too fast. If you kill them too fast, it actually bugs. Uh, it did bug for me, which is annoying. But the last paint bucket, if you want your uh, Iron Juggernaut to be gray, is right here. It's behind these boxes, right before Garrosh. So open that, and you can stop at this point if you want. You do not need to kill Garrosh. I'm going to go ahead and um, make this thing. So I'm going to make a uh, teal, because why not? Let me go ahead and place them on the ground, and now I can tame them, because I can tame mechanical pets. Make sure you, you're able to tame mechanical pets before you do this. Uh, now, if you want the other colors, it does take a week. So you do need those two parts from Iron Juggernaut and Black Fuse, and then you can use one of the existing paint colors you already have. And that is the Iron Juggernaut pet. Now this next pet is Fren Fenrir, one of my favorite looking pets out of the bosses. And he is in the uh, Halls of Valor dungeon. So we're in Stormheim and Legion. Stormheim and Legion. And uh, that's the raid. We're going to go into the dungeon to tame Fenrir. This was introduced uh, in Legion, obviously. You do need to put it on Mythic difficulty. It's Mythic only. And this was kind of made as a solo challenge for Hunters. Uh, where you have to do this instant solo halls of valor solo at max level it's obviously easy uh but even if you are current level of halls of valor it's uh, still not very that it's not still not very difficult because you can just camouflage past pretty much everything uh you do need to kill the first boss though but that's that's the only boss you have to well you, ha you do also have to defeat fed rear on mythic difficulty but other than that you can um camouflage past all of this stuff so we're going to Go over to Fenrir real quick. So we're going to run over here to Fenrir. This is the first uh, stage where you fight him. And you want to damage him down to whatever percentage he runs away at. Which I think is 80. Uh, or maybe it's 70. It's not run there. Anyways, he runs away and vulnerable. And um... Now let's, let's go over to where he is. So, you cannot tame him like this. As you can tell, I'm going to dismiss my pet. I'm going to try to tame him. I need to get closer. And cre creature cannot be tamed. You do need to defeat him. So we're going to defeat him like this. If you're max level, it's obviously very easy. But once we defeat him, he reappears in his cave. Um, neutral and he only does that if you do this solo so I don't know if I mentioned that earlier but you do need to do the solo you could not have other people in your group so let me go ahead and tame him and here we go this is Fenrir he is a wolf so he's non exotic don't need to be beast mastery to tame him ferocity and his special abilities furious bite 
which reduces the target's movement speed by 50%. Now the final boss is Tortos from Throne of Thunder. Now, um, if you haven't been able to tell, this isn't Throne of Thunder. This is Surmar. And uh, the area is around this. So Tortos and Throne of Thunder is actually not tameable. But you can still get his appearance. I do think it's a pretty cool turtle appearance. It's the only turtle that looks like that, at least. Um, from turtles around here. Now, as you see around here, there's mist. Uh, there's ha lowland hard shells. And there's some, like... No, that's a, that's a cat. But this rare... Actually, it's, well, it's actually not a rare, but it is a uh, kind of a rare spawn. Just doesn't have the silver dragon around its name. It spawns in this area and it shares a cooldown, or it shares a spawn timer with these lowland heart shells. So, if you want it to spawn, you can, um, you keep killing these things until it spawns. It might take a little bit, but at least you'll get the turtle model that you want. And I would also attract beasts. Just in case, it's called a lowland mana shell. Just make sure you don't kill it when it spawns. And here we go. It actually really didn't take that long. But I just kept killing these lowland uh, hard shells around here. And the lowland mana shell came. And it's turtle, meaning it is non-exotic. Its special ability is shell shield. Produces damage taken by 50%. And it is a tenacity pet. So there you have it guys, 17 bosses that can be tamed. Some exotic, some not. It seems like Blizz waits about like two expansions before making a boss tameable, usually. That's how Chimera, Thok, and Iron Juggernaut were at least. Uh, not really Fenrir. But anyways, I hope in a couple expansions from now, we can tame Resin from Atal Dazar, maybe Sand Queen from Told to Gore. Obviously making these bosses tameable now would give groups with a hunter a huge leg up in Mythic Pluses. But if you guys found this video interesting at all, then feel free to leave a like on it. I'd also like to hear your favorite pets in the comments below, but sub to the channel for more videos like this. And I will see you guys in the next video.